This is part one in a series of videos that talk about astronomy versus astrology. To understand the difference between astronomy and astrology and how things fit together, we need to understand how we view the sky. So in this video, we're going to talk about the celestial sphere and the idea of circumpolar stars. So here we have the celestial sphere. Basically, you can imagine it as being the Earth is in the middle and there is this enormous sphere around us on which all of the stars are placed on the inside. The celestial sphere has an equator that's just the extension of the Earth's equator. And it had poles above the North Pole is the North Celestial Pole and above the South Pole is the South Celestial Pole. Um, and so the idea is that this is uh, the construct for having the Earth stationary and it is the sky that is moving. So this is the old fashioned idea of a geocentric model of the universe. Now we need to think about this in terms of how things move. So here we have the Earth again, and we have the North Pole, the South Pole, the equator. Here we have someone standing in North America, not to scale, and point directly above your head, no matter where you're standing, the point is called the zenith. And then this kind of pinky colored line here, this shows you your horizon. So you can see everything above that line, and you can see nothing below it. You can also see the celestial equator on here. That's again, the extension of the Earth's equator. So if you drew a plane through the Earth's equator, it would intersect with the celestial sphere at the celestial equator. And remember that the Earth turns, so it appears like the sky moves and that the sky would be moving around in this direction. So that's the basic setup for the celestial sphere. Now there's a few interesting things about the celestial sphere. So here we have again, the Earth, we have someone standing at 45 degrees north, again, not to scale. And for this person that's standing right here, again, the zenith is directly above their head. This here is their horizon. They cannot see anything down here that's below their horizon. Here's the celestial equator. And then we have, here's the North Pole. So the North Celestial Pole is here. Now there is a star very close to the point of the North Celestial Pole. And so this is Polaris, the pole star. And so it's right here. So if you're standing at this position, then in order to see the pole star, you'd need to look in the direction of north. But then instead of looking at the horizon, you'd look through an angle that would take you up to 45 degrees if you're standing at 45 degrees. So in this case, it's saying this person is at an angle phi for their latitude. And it would be the same angle phi that you would have to turn your head through from the horizon to find a pole star Polaris at the North Celestial Pole. So how high in the sky is it going to be? Well, it's basically the same as your latitude. So what is our latitude? I'm in San Antonio. So my latitude is a little over 29 degrees. And so that means that in order to find the pole star, I need to look in the direction north. And then from the horizon, I need to move my head up through an angle of 29.4 degrees. And then I will find the North Star pole star or Polaris. Um, but consequently, if you know how to identify Polaris, you can do the reverse and figure out your latitude. So this is very important for navigation. Here I've got a, a picture. This is actually from Columbus, Ohio, so a little further north than where I am in, in Texas. We're looking north, and if we move our head through the right angle, we will find the pole star, which is marked right here. You can see there are lots of other stars around here. What we're going to do is we're going to watch what happens over the course of a few hours. So as the Earth turns, the sky appears to turn. And what we see is there are some stars here that drop down below the horizon. We have some stars over here that are rising up above the horizon. This is stars setting and stars rising. Let's watch that again. We've got stars going below the horizon. They are setting. Stars coming up above the horizon, they are rising. But up here, we have stars that go round and round and round and never rise or set because they're always above the horizon. These are the circumpolar stars. Circum for around and pole, polar for polar. Uh, and so basically they go around the pole star. How many uh, circumpolar stars you get to see depends on your latitude. So here we're looking at, uh, again, here's the Earth. If we were standing so that we were um, vertically upright right here, this blue uh, plane, that would be our horizon. You wouldn't see anything below that. So everything down here would not be seen. So there are some stars down here that we would never see because they're on that bit of the celestial sphere that they don't get above our horizon. 
same time, everything in this portion here never goes below our horizon. Those are our SOCOM polar stars. And then the bit in between, the stuff that's in this part here, those stars rise and set. So as you head towards the North Pole, you're going to have more circumpolar stars. Here's a person, again, not to scale, standing on the Earth, again, probably somewhere in North America. And for this person, here we have their horizon. They cannot see these stars down here. They can see these stars down up here, and they never, ever set. We can't see them during the day because the sky is blue. If we didn't have an atmosphere, we would be able to see stars during the day, and then we would see these stars going round and round and round. And then here we have the stars that some of the time they're below the horizon, some of the time they're above. And so those are the stars that go rise and set. So circumpolar stars never rise or set. They just rotate around the pole star. And so if you point a camera at the pole star and you record it for a little while, what you'll get is what's called star trails. So as the Earth turns, instead of having a point for a star, it'll trace out its path across the sky. The closer to the pole star, the smaller the circle. And you can see some of these stars are setting, but these ones here are not. So let's take a look and see what happens with latitude. So here we have a position at 45 degrees north. That your horizon would be this line here. Here's the Earth. And this star Castor is above the horizon most of the time. Because we have a lot of circumpolar stars. Castor is below the horizon a little bit, but it's up most of the time. Whereas Sirius is actually below the horizon more of the time than it's above. As we head north, we're now at 70 degrees. So think Iceland or Greenland. And here's our horizon. But now what we're seeing is that Sirius is hardly above the horizon at all. We're hardly seeing it at all. Whereas now Castor is circumpolar. It never sets. And once we get to the North Pole at 90 degrees north, what we find is that the stars just go round and round and round and there's no rising or setting. Go to the other extreme and go to the equator. What we find is Here's Earth again, here's our horizon. Now all stars rise and set, there are no circumpolar stars. But as we head further south, so now we're at 45 degrees south, and what we're seeing is that Sirius is going to be above the horizon more than not, and Castor is getting to be hard to see, it's close to the horizon and doesn't stay up much. And at the South Pole, Sirius will be a circumpolar star, and Castor will be not seen at all from the South Pole. So you can see how the circumpolar stars work. So we've just heard about the celestial sphere and the idea of stars that don't rise and set and that others do. In the next section, we'll get into understanding constellations and the ecliptic.